In a previous video, I talked about time dilation, and I briefly mentioned length contraction. But if you want to know the details, here are the details on length contraction. So what I've drawn here is a vertically oriented light clock, just like the one I used for time dilation. It's got length L. So if it's not moving, the time required for the light to bounce up and down a round trip is simply 2L over C, right? Now, if you're moving with respect to the clock, we went through in the previous video, that this will actually be a longer time, as measured by you, and it will be longer by this factor gamma, which is 1 if you're not moving at all with respect to the clock, but can become much larger than 1 if you're moving very fast with respect to the clock. So that's time dilation. Length contraction works if you compare the vertical clock with the horizontal clock. Now if you're not moving with respect to the clocks, they have to be ticking the same time. So that proves that the, uh, if you put these clocks in a truck, for example, and you're a stationary observer as the clocks move by, they have to both be slowed by the same amount. Because for each of them, the truck driver is going to think they haven't slowed at all. They have to be ticking at the same rate. All right? But there's a different equation for the time required for light to make a round trip here. It's going to be the same time, but there's going to be a different equation. So. Although in the truck driver's frame, the length of this clock is just L, it's an identical clock. In the moving frame, it's going to turn out that it's a different length. So we'll start out just by using a different symbol, so we don't get confused. We're going to call L prime the length in the moving frame. Now the time required to do a round trip bounce in the moving frame is equal to, well in one direction, the light has to travel L prime at a relative velocity of the light and the clock, of V plus C. And then on the return trip, it has to travel the same distance at a relative velocity of V minus C. Okay, this is not in the clock's frame, this is in your frame. Light is traveling at C with respect to you, but the clock is traveling at V with respect to you. So that's why we have these relative velocities. All right, so this is the time required for a round trip tick of the horizontal clock. We've already argued that it's equal to the time required for a round trip tick of the vertical clock. So we're going to set these two things equal. So we get, um, well, I'll just write it here. We have that's equal to 2L over C times gamma. Gamma is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. And so I won't bore you with the details, but you can just uh, rearrange this, multiply both sides of the equation by V plus C and by V minus C, and then you'll get something that looks like 2L prime on the left, and a little rearranging on the right, and you'll end up with an equation that looks like L prime equals L times square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. And we could also write that as L over gamma. Now remember, uh, gamma is a number that's always 1 or bigger. So what this says is that the length of something as measured by the moving observer is equal to the proper length, that's the length measured by the stationary observer, divided by some number bigger than one. So you get a shorter length if you're a moving observer. And that's length contraction.